Everyone, I've got a little something to show you. Speak softly because he's nearly asleep. My little bat guy. Obviously he's a felty. Needle felted. On a wire armature, so he's fairly poseable. You want a closer look at him? Okay. My wings are like a shield of steel. Your bullets cannot harm me. Ten points for anyone who can remember the cartoon. Am I the only one that plays with their felties? Please tell me I'm not. Right, why I decided to make this little guy is my Facebook feed has been filled with photographs of something similar to this. Have you guys seen the same thing? Some There's a needle felted bat or a supposed needle felted bat being advertised all over Facebook and it is utterly adorable. The pictures were just the cutest things in the world with a little bat all snuggly up. But when I went to look for it, it seems pretty suspicious. Now the original sites I've seen it on, I can't even access anymore. And it's been shared from a page, Needle Felting Animals, but I'm not sure if they're the people that make this. I have a feeling this is rather like the Needle Felted Fox thing where it's gone viral, it's been shared, but what you're going to buy is not from the actual artist. In fact, in fact, the look and the feel is pretty similar to the fox, so I'm going to check the art, the, that artist's Instagram page to see if this is hers as well. And if it is, there's no way she's selling it for £15. Now, actually, I was going to buy from the listing the £15 one just to see what you got, because I'm pretty sure it's a scam. But now my computer won't even open up that link. So I don't know what's going on. Somebody's paying a lot of money to advertise... A picture of a little fox and you can't even go to where it's selling it but I'm pretty sure it's a scam because 15 pounds well this guy took me the best part of a day to make and yeah 15 pounds is not enough <laughs> so I thought I would have a go at making something like this to see how easy it is to make now again because I don't know who the original artist is I'm not making these pieces to sell it was just a fun project because it did look kind of adorable so let's see how I made this guy so first of all, I sketched out a rough size of what I thought it would be like and just roughly penciled in where I thought the armature was going to be. Now it's pretty much the same armature as I use for almost everything, for my medium dog armature. But obviously, so if you think of his wings like arms and fingers and then it works pretty much the same. So getting plenty of wire. Um, I've got two types of wire here. I've got a really firm wire and a soft wire. I can't tell you what any of the gauges are anymore. I don't remember. Um, but follow the lines that I've drawn in. So starting off, I fold my most sturdy wire in half and I twist down to the length of the nose and then bend and twist down for the neck. And then when we get to the shoulders, this is going to be my second piece of wire. I twist the, what was the head piece and the second piece, I twist one 360 twist on each side. So the original head piece comes off and becomes the arms and the new piece becomes the body and legs. So I fold roughly into the shape of the leading edge of the arm, the leading edge of the wing, I think you call it, up along the way and then down and for his body, making a quick V for his chest to have some, some shape, some dimension there. I give it a couple of twists and then bend it out for the legs. Now the first images I saw, it had kind of long toes. This bat had long toes that could cling onto things. So I thought I'd have a go at making toes. So yeah, here you go. <laughs> Basically leaving a loop in the end of the legs, but leaving the end of it open, I wrap some of my softer wire down the leg and then into this open area for the foot make it into a loop the length I want for the foot and then up using the gap that I've left to get the wire through I give one one twist around the the foot 
wire and then leave another loop and then one twist and leave another loop and then finish it off wrapping a couple of times around the foot and then what I'm going to do is with my pliers because this is a wonderful soft wire I just twist it nice and tightly so it's a nice neat thin toe and the exact same on the other foot <laughs> And for the rest of the wings, the picture of this bat only had like three fingers down and the one thumb up the way. Although I imagine bats have four fingers. But um, so I just did the three. So that was just going to be one more piece of wire and a bend it, bend it in half, wrap it round the piece where the thumb's going to be. And then I fix that with some of the thinner wire as well, wrapping around a few times and leaving the leaving the ends off um, to be the thumb. And that and that is all there is to the armature, although it is quite fiddly. Um, usually I would fold over the ends of wire, of any wire, but in this case, because I didn't want it all to become too bulky, I've left the end of the wing tips as just the bare end of the wire. You could, if you were gonna sell this or give it to a child, I would certainly tape it up with a little bit of florist tape or something to make it a little bit um, less jaggy. And then just wrapping wool around the armature. It's a total pain when you've got so many bits of wire here. I'm not going to lie, each bit of wire gets in the way, so it gets easier as you go along. Now, you could use some kind of sticky stuff. Um, you can use glue, as I've used in previous videos, or there's all sorts of substances on the market um, to help the, the wool stick to the wire. But I found in the main... Once you wrap it round once, it starts to cling to itself, so it's not so bad. So wrapping the whole armature and the and the body and the head. I decided I wanted him to have a little fat belly so I added a little bit of extra a little rolled up poof for the belly because it's amazing it's amazing how a fat belly on so many creatures apart from well me looks awesome and cute um, and again for his head I'm wanting to try and have the neck fairly thin so his head's still able to move uh, wrapping his nose and then wrapping his head so his head becomes a ball 
and then felting all over that till it's fairly smooth and kind of in the shape I want. I decided for the wings it would look better and be much easier to use two sheets of pre-felt so I cut them I cut them out and stick them on top and on bottom and just felt them in place. That just means his his fingers only show up a little bit rather than being quite so prominent. <laughs> I see in the picture his nose and forehead area seems a little shaded in brown so I just add a little brown to those areas. The eyes are six millimeter black glass eyes. And one thing that makes the picture really cute is his brown eyelids. So I decided to do that. I felted two really thin tubes of the brown fibre, felted them fairly firmly. And this is where, of course, my camera failed to record. But I just felted it on from the inner eye up and around his eye back to the inner eye. And it gives quite a cute little expression. It makes him look like quite a cute little baby vampire. For the ears I went with pre-felt as well just because I had some extra lying about. Cut a double double slit of triangles and then trimmed into play trimmed into shape and felted quite wide apart on the ears. make a little brown nose. Um, they seem to have a line down the middle of the nose and two quite distinct nostrils. So if you make anything like this, I would love to see your pictures. Don't forget to either tag me at Ben McFuzzy Lugs or pop them into Ben McFuzzy Lugs on Facebook or join the or join the group Pam Duthie's Felting Friends. Thank you so much and I'll see you next time.